all this Lincoln Riley talk, right? Yep. And, and I got more people Smoke. yesterday in my DMs, on my mentions, like, you moron, I heard you say mm-hmm. LSU and Lincoln Riley's not a better fit. Who would you bad rather? Bad timing. You yeah, it was bad time. Um, <laughs> I did not cut it. I did not put it on YouTube. But. Got out on Twitter. Here's the deal on Lincoln Riley, and there's a ton of smoke on Lincoln Riley right now around LSU, and there was reports from Hank Smith, <laughs> Hank LSU Smith. insider, that uh, that Lincoln Riley's agent was in town yesterday uh, meeting with LSU officials. There are reports out there that it is a $12 million a year deal and for five years, floor. which is, wh- is kind of like where they are. Uh, they're starting the conversation. That's right. It could grow up to $15 million a year. Riley's buyout is plus twenty million dollars yeah. at Oklahoma. Mm, go on. I mean, we're talking about it's a fifty million dollar uh, just on the head coach. Yeah, just on the head yeah. coach. I, I mean, I don't you're, know. you're talking million, about dude. a lot of money on just one person, and you got to fill out about fifteen of these spots. I love it. Um, Alabama's like shit. I mean, I didn't, now didn't, I got to go pay you... Nick Saban fifteen million, right? Because he's gonna have to be the highest paid coach. Yeah, that's right. He so, does. Isn't that in his contract? contract? That's in his contract. One dollar more than one dollar more. Which is so, such a gangster contract. That is a gangster, but it's a gangster move by LSU to make him. Oh, I yeah. mean, I, I, the, this old okay, man over there. Here's the yes. thing: Do you really believe that? Yes. Twelve million. You really believe the numbers? Yes. I don't. Yes. You. We're playing a different game here, brother. I you don't got, believe you those got numbers. Scott Woodward, big game hunter. Million. You're gonna Ain't give twelve no million. You're gonna give twelve million dollars to a guy who's never won a national championship, yes. and it gets blown out by SEC teams coming into the SEC. Yes. Af- no, I don't believe that. Uh, all right, I screwed up the uh, the um, buyout talk. He only gets 20, uh, 20, plus twenty million if he's fired. Uh, let me find out his uh, his buyout. Um, I think it's eight or nine. It, it, okay, is it eight? Yeah, because yeah, I did see eight. Um, so they have to pay him even if he takes another job. If he takes another job. LSU has to buy LSU him out. has to okay, buy, buy, buy yeah, him yeah, yeah. out. Okay, if okay, he gets yeah. fired. If Oklahoma was to fire him, yeah, they, they would him owe him 20, the remainder 20, 20. of his contract. Um, so uh, an $8 million buyout, uh, buyout with a proposal on the table, um, allegedly. Allegedly. Somewhere Remember. around 12 to $15 million a year. Um, when I say that out loud, do you think Lincoln Riley, $15 million a I year don't. coach? I don't. I do. Really? Age makes sense. If you want to get him for as long, obviously you have to. There's some smoke around him going to the NFL. Yeah, I mean, I guess. You have to quell yeah. those fears with money because all NFL coaching contracts are locked, sealed, under key. You don't know what, what they make. So $15 million is probably competitive for the NFL market. I, 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 think, I think that's way more. I think NFL coaches get less than college coaches. But I think that it would be public if that were the case. I think that there's a reason that they hide out. They, from what know, I've dude. heard – and read about this, and Bill Belichick makes upward of fifteen. Yeah, but so that's, that's the, I would imagine that's as high as it right. gets. So you're pricing around if it's twelve, that's probably what NFL head coaches make. We could ask somebody. Yeah, like I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think, an, an, like a normal head coach, like obviously not the top tier NFL What's Sean coaches. Payton make eight, seven. It's up to you. It's not, Ten, it's maybe? not public. Yeah, but like I mean, that's none of that's it. public information. I think is of. Uh, like no, I mean, I've, I've seen I mean, they, but they, he signed the, ter- the extension. Yeah, deals. I've seen the terms of, of Payton's yeah, yeah. contract. Um, when, I mean, like when it first came out, if you remember, they, they paid him during his suspended season. Right. And they made him actually the highest paid coach in the league that year. But in 2019, he agreed to a five-year extension. Um, as I'm searching through I got the, you, uh, I got article. you, I got you. So Bill, Bill Belichick, 12, Pete Carroll, 11, Sean Payton, 10. Harbaugh, 9. Right. So, yeah, he's in that. Sean McVay makes 8. Right, that's my point, though, is like, I mean, it's okay. I say less. It's similar to what like the top tier uh, NFL head coaches uh, make because you have to compete in that market. Um, he's not getting twelve going to NFL though. Well, he's not going to take not his first, first no, hit. That's unless he, unless, unless if Dallas hires him, right? If you're, to throw that's kind of what you have to compete against, right? You're competing right, against no, the it. Dallas Cowboys. You're, you're in that arena because Lincoln Riley, because of his age, regardless of what you think he's done in the playoff, what he's done in the regular season, and this. The, the, the season he's put together and the record that he's put together win loss wise is nothing to sneeze at. Right. And he's been able to go everywhere he's gone, he's won. And he's part of a coaching tree that, if you look at it, is extensive and is somebody that he's successful. This is what, if you want to get into this market, if you're, and if you're LSU, aren't you finally happy they're taking a swing? Because this was the biggest thing for LSU football that they've never done. It's always, oh, they priced themselves out. Oh, they won't go, they won't actually take the big swing. 
Now with Scott Woodward, which this is his calling card, he's finally doing the thing that LSU football fans have been wanting to see since Nick Saban left. Right. I I agree that I just I just don't like. You think that his value is? You think that twelve million is like his value? He wins. Yes, he's successful. He has a good offense, but he's never won any games of substance. He's won in a conference that he's been the best team in the conference for years, which is great. It's, it's a it's great on him, but he gets his doors blown off in the postseason. Um, as I said yesterday, I thought that the last game out for Lincoln Riley was 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 bad timing for LSU. His comments after the game were very much not endearing of of you know a, a a big game coach when he was talking about some of the things that Dave Aranda and Baylor were doing late in that game. But yesterday he was asked about him or his representatives being in contact with LSU, and he said yesterday on the University of Oklahoma's campus. I coach at U- uh, University of Oklahoma. You know how I feel about this place and this program. We've all been down this road many times before. You know, uh, you guys know where I stand, and that hasn't changed. That's not. Uh, that is definitely like Jimbo Fisher a yeah. couple of weeks back where you're trying to answer the question, but you're not answering the question. Jimbo Fisher finally answered the question on Monday, when he was asked about the LSU job and put out there, he said, I would be the dumbest person on, on, on the planet Earth to leave College Station. If Jimbo Fisher, in fact, leaves Texas A&M, that soundbite will live forever. Right. That, that will always be around him. If LSU and Lincoln Riley come to an agreement, you'll go back to yesterday's press conference at Oklahoma and say, you see, he was actually in contact with them during the season because he didn't definitively come out and say, look, I'm the head coach at Oklahoma. I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not interested in any other job because coaches can put this stuff to bed really quick. Jimbo did it Mm -hmm. on Monday, right? He left the door open a month ago when he was asked about it. He was obviously being courted or going back and forth with Woodward on the possibility of taking that job. Um, Riley seems in his answer yesterday – and in, in, in a lot of what is being discussed around the college football world, Tom Luganbill yesterday on Sirius XM Radio really got this stuff started as he said he wouldn't be surprised if Lincoln Riley would be the next guy in Baton Rouge. So not only are people talking about it locally, they're talking about it over in Norman, they're talking about it here in Baton Rouge and around the state of Louisiana, but they're also talking about it from a national standpoint within college football. So it feels real. It feels like yeah. it's got some legs to it. And if it does, one thing that you get with Riley, and I think the first thing off the top, and we've talked about this throughout this coaching search and throughout this job being announced that it was open, is that the next candidate, the next guy, whoever it's going to be, you want them to have a specialty. You want them to be an expert in something in football, whether it's offense, defense, special team, whatever it is. You want them to have some type of expertise that they can fall back on and answer the own questions, their own questions about their football team, right? I mean, how discouraging is it to ask Ed Ogeron about the problems of the offense and him say, I'm not an offensive guy, I don't know. How many times have you asked him about the struggles of the defense and him kind of say, look, that's on the coordinator. Well, what's your specialty, man? Who are you? If you were to ask Lincoln Riley about what's going on with your offense, why is it struggling? He's going to be able to give you direct answers because he is he's the brains of the offense. He's the guy. He's the one that's putting it in. So immediately you become relevant on offense, right? Like you check that box for the last 20 seasons or the last 12 seasons, excuse me, Lincoln Riley's offense has been in the top 20. That's consistent. Yep. That's year in, year out, no matter where he is. He was at East Carolina. He was at the University of Oklahoma. I- anywhere he's been, they've had a top 20 offense over the last 12 years. That's real good, man. I mean, that's, that is a strong opening line of an interview, right? But then you see, in my, and this is just my opinion, and I, look, if they get Lincoln Riley, I think Lincoln Riley is a home run hire as far as a big game guy in college football that you go pluck away from your competition somebody coming into the league make them weaker and and put him on your sideline the only thing that I am a little weary about with Riley right when we're talking about these big game guys these big name coaches is the resources that he's had at his disposal since he's been at Oklahoma 
the program that he's running is an SEC caliber program as far as resources, facilities, recruiting, everything, attention, media, all of the stuff that goes into running and operating the University of Oklahoma's football program feels SEC. And he's been a contender in in the playoff in 2017, 2018, and 2019. And he's never gotten past the semifinal because he doesn't have a defense. And while I know he's brought in hires, he's still not made the correct and right adjustments to become a true championship-level program. They're winning Big 12 titles. They're in the playoffs. They're making those moves. But they've not been able to ever cross over the, the defensive mountain and become a legitimate national championship contending program. Nobody's taking them serious in that Final Four. Legitimately serious, right? I mean, I I know you got to respect them because they're there, but within the the playoff structure, they've never had the defense to compete. And I thought the comments after the game on Saturday about the field goal and the tiebreaker and the, the, the stuff that was going on at Baylor just came off very soft. It came off very weak. It came off as an excuse. And in the coaching world, that don't play. It definitely doesn't play in Baton Rouge. It doesn't play in the SEC. It doesn't play in the heart of the Southeastern Conference in a town like where LSU resides. And my comment about him being a bad fit just went on that, those terms alone. I mean, look, if Lincoln Riley comes in here and you've got a top 20 offense every year and he spends the money and goes out and identifies an expert on the defensive side and they're able to recruit the caliber of athlete and player that LSU defenses has seen in the last 15, 20 years, well, I mean, you know, it's a proven formula. LSU can win SEC titles and national championships. And with a guy like Lincoln Riley, who's had the consistency at Oklahoma of getting to that game, can he cross over the mountain when he gets to a place like LSU? If that's what it takes, then, and Scott Woodward believes that, then I, I, I'm in. But just from my point of view right now and what I'm judging and looking at, Lincoln Riley with the resources, the money, the opportunities that they've had, the fact that he doesn't have a defense or has not had a defense to cross over that hump is concerning. And then you look at some of the things that he said, and particularly what he said on Saturday, and it was just, in my opinion, it turned me off. I mean, it just was like, ugh, why? Eh, just coach your team, yeah, you know necessary. what I mean? Right, and I get that. I get coming from that it was a little, yeah, I can see that it being a little soft, but what are we talking about here? Look about look at who, when we had this conversation and the, the job came open, what was the first thing we said? Look who's been able to win at LSU that actually isn't, doesn't feel like a very legitimate head coach. You have Les Miles that's won a national championship year. You have Ed Orgeron who's won a national championship year. And then if you can get a name like Lincoln Riley, who's been proven to be probably a top three head coach in college football, what do you think he's going to do at LSU? Like, don't forget where he's going and the opportunity he has in Baton Rouge. Like, if you want to look at it very, if you want to, you know, get a microscope out and examine his comments and look at what he did very recently, where he's probably at a time in his life where th- the bullets are flying fast now. Because if you don't think he's talked to people before this Baylor game even happened, I would think that you would be wrong. I would imagine that these conversations go back farther than just yesterday. Like, he was in talks before the Baylor yeah. game, and things are starting to get very real for right. him It looked like the, the realest the LSU discussions have been was actually last week. Right. Yeah. He seemed very distracted last week. He called off media, press conferences. He, during Again? the game... Yes. Um, yeah, he Second moved time. it. Wow. He moved it. Um, you know, during the game, he just looked distracted, yeah. and then after the game, making those comments, I mean, that's usually a coach where your head's just not in it. Right, he's just frustrated. Like, he's frustrated with losing, he's frustrated with the co- the questions he's going to get the rest of the week. All the while, he's trying to negotiate, or at least as part of a negotiation, to leave jobs, leave Oklahoma, wants to leave it in the best place possible, I'd imagine, and then be able to go to LSU and make it seamless. And the last thing he wants is just playing out publicly, which I'm sure Scott Woodward would be in the same boat, and now here we are with Hank Smith and black SUVs, and it is peak LSU coaching service.